Hello guys, I'm the Other Fits and welcome to another Sailwind video. In the last video I showed you how to use your ropes to uh, conveniently move yourself up and down the dock and to reposition your boats so that you can sail off. Today I'm going to be speaking about a triangular course. Now that is the three main different directions you can sail in a sailing boat. So let's start off with what I have. I am in my little sailing boat and the wind is coming across my boat so that's 90 degrees to the boat as you can see from my little yellow pennant. Let's just go inside the boat and have a little look. There we are. It's currently blowing from my port side to my starboard. Because it's going halfway across my boat I should have my sail halfway out which I do roughly this is what's called a crosswind breach now if we want to go on to the opposite crosswind breach I'm going to do a little jibe which I'll explain in more detail in a second And there we go, my sail flipped quite nicely. Okay. Now I've actually turned a little bit too far there, as you can see. I've gone a bit close to the wind, so I'm just going to turn off a second. And a little bit more. Too much. There we go. So here I am on a crosswind breach on the opposite tack. Now, by tack, I know I performed a jibe. Uh, by tack, we're talking about which side the sail is on. Okay. So, just to explain what I did there. A jibe is when you turn away from the wind. When you turn away from the wind, you reach a point, as you turn, where the wind catches this rear area of the sail here, the very back corner. Because it's pulling it right out on the outer edge of the leverage, it pushes the sail over quite dramatically. So I'll show you again. There we go. The wind is directly behind me and the sail will flip any moment. Okay. So that's jibe. And they're often easier to do because you keep your momentum. The reason you keep your momentum is because you're turning away from the wind. So the wind's always giving you some power. So guys, I just wanted to explain the physics of sailing a little bit while we're on the crosswind breach. Anything 90 degrees or closer to the wind, the sail acts like a wing from an aeroplane. A wing, not wind. <laughs> so, you see this lovely curve. What that means is the wind is having to travel further on the outside of the sail than it is on the inside, creating a low and high pressure. That actually creates a pulling motion. The sail gets pulled towards the lower pressure. The only time you're actually being pushed is when you're on a downwind run, which I'll show you next. So I'll turn to starboard a little bit. If I actually go on the helm first. Turning to starboard. Because I was on a crosswind breach, I want to turn about 90 degrees. Oh, now I may have actually gone too far there, so let's have a look at my sails. There we go. Yes, I did go a bit too far. So let's turn back so the wind is directly the way we are going. <laughs> the new sailing physics are wonderful, but I'm just getting used to the sensitivities of it. So, we're going directly downwind. We are being pushed by the wind. But as you can see, I've still got my sails set up for a crosswind breach, which means halfway in. Okay. To get best speed going downwind, I need to present as much of the sail to the wind as possible. That means I need to let it all the way out. So with the lovely new uh, control, 
that has been added in with the new patch. I can hold shift. And out it goes. Lovely. I might actually pull it in just a little bit to keep the pressure on the sail. We want it to be across the boat. Now on a downwind run. Now at this point we're being pushed by the wind. Which is why the boat tends to dip at the front. The leverage at the top of the mast is pushing us into the waves a little bit. So now let's try a close haul. A close haul is as close to the wind as we can possibly get. So I'm going to start off by preparing my sail for the crosswind uh, breach because I'm going to have to turn through that first. And I can do that before I turn in this instance because the wind is still going to push me along, albeit a little bit slower now. And I am going to turn towards the wind. Let's see if I got that turn right this time. There we go. I'm getting used to the sensitivities now. Okay. Now I'm going to go for a close uh, a close haul. It's called a close haul because you have to haul the sail in close. Once again, I can actually set my sail before I start turning into the wind. Now, with this kind of rig, I should be able to get about 38 degrees to the wind, which is a bit closer than what I am at the moment. So let's keep going. There we are. In fact, I'm... let's have a little look at our sail. Yes, that's about right. Got a nice gentle breeze today, so we're not healing over too far. Okay. And um, now on a close haul. From a host close haul, I can do attack. Attack is when we turn into the wind. And I should now have enough speed that I can turn through irons, which is when the boat turns to face the wind and stops, and get onto the opposite tack. So let's try it now. I'm going to turn all the way to port. Here comes irons. And there goes irons. Now because I'm using this rig, I don't have to change the rope I'm using. The boom will flip sides on its own, quite happily. Using this technique, I can travel upwind. So my camera is currently facing upwind at the moment. And although I'm not moving directly towards it, I'm moving at a diagonal. Once I feel I've moved far enough, I can tack again. I can tack again. With this particular sailing boat, which is the best of the three starter boats for going upwind without having a secondary sail, um, I can go upwind pretty fast, actually. It's a little bit more hard work than going downwind or across the wind. But actually, if you think about the physics and the fact that a sail works like a wing, this should be the faster way to travel. So my boat is going faster as the crow flies, but I'm having to take a longer route. So roughly speaking, it is about the same amount of time to get upwind as it is to get back downwind. Unless, of course, you're sailing a square rig vessel, in which case it'd be far faster downwind. So let's just talk about some things that you may encounter. So I'm going to release the sail just here. I'm going to turn myself into irons. Now irons is the term we use for saying head to wind. So I'm going to point the bow right at the wind. interesting with the new physics. 
because I've run out of speed and the new physics pushed the boat I'm actually being pushed back out of irons it's very useful so what I'm going to do instead is force the issue because sometimes you'll you'll just end up accidentally in irons it happens to every sailor so here we go let's get the tightness of the sail back in back onto a close haul you see we started moving again And it should be us pretty much in irons if I pull all the way over. Let's see. Okay, I've got a flappy sail. A flappy burgee. And therefore, I am in irons. How do I get out of it? Now in this game, you can actually physically push the boat from the outside, but I don't like getting my feet wet. Now that we have the physics for definite, okay, that blows the boat, what I'm going to do is imagine that I'm already sailing backwards. And I'm going to turn the wheel in the way that makes me turn backwards. So I turn it that way a little bit. I don't want to go full lock because I'll actually create a friction effect with the water. Instead, I want a nice shallow turn like that. Okay, and I just wait. I'm going to be patient. You can see my boat is starting to turn very, very slowly. And with that turn, my boom, my yard arm, is trying to get in the right position to sail because that's what it wants to do physically it naturally wants to sit in the right place to sail so now that I'm there I can straighten up I can pull my sail in I can pull my sail in and I can pull it in some more And once I put some pressure on the sail with the ropes, if I've allowed myself to turn far enough, my boat will begin moving forwards. To which I can then use the speed to come off the wind a little bit, because now I am imagining that I'm steering forwards and readiness for it, and pick up some speed. Voila! We are now nearly out of the danger zone. <laughs> Not quite picked up enough speed yet for me to consider myself safely out of irons. So I've got to turn out a little bit more. Now, in a sailing rig that you can force the sail to the wrong side, i.e. The, uh, the little cog we have access to, you can actually sail backwards. That's right, you can sail backwards. By either forcing the uh, square rig square, or using the triangular rig on the wrong side. If you put it on the wrong side and steer as if you're going backwards, you will completely go in reverse. And you can't sail in reverse upwind, but you can sail in reverse downwind. It can be quite a useful little trick. So this is the Latin rig. Okay, and it's a nice little single-handed starter boat which you can access the halyard the halyard uh, is on your side and the sheet is very close to the wheel the halyard being the haul yard so you haul the sail up the mast the sheet is what controls where the sail is so that's slightly different from a reefing. Um, now if I was in heavy weather, I might want to do my reefing, and that's what it's for. I can control my speed by putting a reef in. In reality, though, to make a reef, I would have to pull the yard arm down I would have to use the straps that are stitched into most sails to tie them to a loop on the other side of the sail 
and fold it neatly so it doesn't create a drag on the rest of the sail. So it's not something I can do instantly. And I'll come into that in a later video when I show you how to come alongside. But I'll leave you with this thought. If I know how to position my sail to get best speed, and I don't want to go at top speed, then could I simply sail wrong in order to slow down? I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like or subscribe. And of course, go to Steam and buy this game. It's so chilled. It's so fun. It's awesome. The guy is working really hard on it, uh, Raw Lion Studios. And honestly, for one person to make this game is quite incredible. See you next time, guys.